Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are in the truck now heading down to the old house to do our final garden tour slash harvest. We are going to harvest literally every single thing that can be harvested out of the garden. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about this. I felt really good about it, but I haven't really had time to process or think or contemplate it because life, you know, has been crazy between remodeling, move, harvest, food preservation, and all the things. Really haven't had time to like process or, or uh, really think about you know that this is this is it so I hope you enjoy hanging out with me this morning as we go down there it's early I have boxes and baskets and all the things and there's some things that I've been hoping are ready to harvest today but I don't know today is the first day of fall it's beautiful outside it's going to be a glorious day I hope you enjoy joining me today as we walk through the garden for the final time. We harvest everything that is possible to harvest out of the garden and we just see how abundant a neglected garden can be. All right, we are here with our trusty basket. I know the first thing I want to get are those sugar rush peach peppers because I've been so excited <laughs> about growing those peppers and they've been taking forever to ripen. I do want to show you one thing here. Our figs from our fig tree, they are not going to ripen in time for me to harvest them, which is okay. The next person that is going to enjoy this property is going to have a massive fig harvest this year. We did sell this house and today is the last day. We close on it tomorrow. So I'm just really excited to spend the morning here with you. Take it all in. Be grateful for what this garden has given us. This garden has given me more than just beautiful produce to enjoy and preserve for the winter. It's given me skills. It's allowed me to meet all of you and have an abundance of friends that I never would have dreamed of. And so I just have so much to be grateful for this garden. These are the sugar rush peach peppers that we've been waiting for months and months and months to harvest and I'm so excited. Today is the day. We are going to harvest every single pepper on this plant. And I think I have six of these plants. We even have some carrots that might be ready to harvest. We are going to pull a couple and see how they look. We planted the carrots July 15th. And I don't know if they will have matured in that amount of time. Today is the first day of fall. I don't know exactly what day of the month that is. I think it's like September 23rd or something. I planted two different varieties of carrots. I planted Napoli and Bolero. The Napoli were a shorter day to maturity carrot, I believe. I'm harvesting even the peppers that aren't fully ripe. So this one looks fully ripe to me. You can see it's kind of a beautiful peach orangey color. These ones are still a little bit, little bit yellow. We'll find something to do with these. These sugar rush peach peppers were peppers that were a gift. The seed was a gift to me in my P.O. box. And I just am so grateful for that because I probably would have never grown this variety of pepper before. And the flavor is phenomenal. My dad came over later this afternoon and he tried one too. And they have a really sweet flavor at first, but they do pack a punch. They are spicy. But the, the first initial flavor is definitely some sweetness and then some really, really good heat. But it's not like um, burn your mouth, you can't taste anything heat. It's a really, really warm heat. And these plants are so productive. Look at the amount of peppers on these one plants. 
I probably will grow these peppers every single year and I'm just really grateful that I was gifted the seed so that I had the opportunity to try something I may have never tried. My plan was to take every single thing out of this garden that I could, like even these tiny little jalapeno peppers. Well, I have a hard time picking this baby jalapeno pepper because our first frost date is normally not until on average November 9th. So I was looking at last year's garden and I was harvesting peppers in October. So I am going to leave these baby peppers and Quite a few of these unripe sugar rush peach peppers. And what I'm going to do is leave them for the next owner. I have no idea if the next owners are gardeners and if they are going to appreciate the abundance that is here and the garden infrastructure, but I feel like that's not for me to decide. I'm gonna just leave it and allow them to enjoy it if they want. And if they wanna rip it out and put a pool here, I'm okay with that too. It felt like I was taking more than I needed. I know that what is ripe and what I'm harvesting today is more than enough for Josh and I's needs. And I did place a pretty big order for some peppers, sweet peppers and some other things from some local farmers in my area. and to kind of strip the garden of everything that it has it just seemed kind of greedy and working from a mindset of scarcity instead of abundance. I love growing food and I love filling my pantry, but I want to make sure that I'm doing that with the heart of gratitude and gratefulness and not out of a heart of scarcity and fear. And this just felt like the right thing to do. This is the harvest just from this one pepper bed. By far the most productive pepper bed I have ever had. Wow. And I have two more pepper beds. <laughs> and we started every single one of these plants from seed together. I am so grateful for the opportunity to grow these peppers, learn, and even this pepper plant, look how tall it is. It's probably a good three feet tall. That's the thing. Where I live, it takes a long time for things to get going because it takes a long time for things to get warm. But now that we're done with this bed, which had our mostly hot peppers in it, and we had lettuces, these are not ready quite to harvest the seeds from these lettuces yet, so we won't get those, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over to this pepper bed where we have all this beautiful lemon basil and our sunflowers. We are gonna harvest these flower heads today so we can get the seeds. Ah, these are our dwarf sunflowers. I don't know if we're gonna save these seeds to replant them. I think what we're gonna do is end up giving these to the chickens and let them enjoy these seeds. I didn't bring any sort of scissors or anything, which probably wasn't the best idea. Oh, there we go. Oh, these ones aren't quite mature mature yet. These ones are.
Now we're gonna go ahead and harvest the peppers that are in this bed. This was our other pepper bed along with a bunch of flowers and our basil. I'm gonna get all the basil this morning I can. The marigolds did phenomenal in here and I loved these marigolds. These were ones that we bought at the nursery together and they were this really beautiful peachy pinky color. And then our poppies did really well and they've gone to seed now. I have a lot of seeds still left from last year that we started. So I don't think I'm gonna do a ton of seed saving when it comes to some of these flowers, just because I have so much on my plate right now that I don't wanna manage seed saving this year because I have still seed from last year. It looks like there's a ton of peppers in here to get. So we're gonna get all these peppers along with the ripe Chinese five color peppers. In this bed, there were some leeks. I grew leeks in this bed last year and some of them went to seed. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest these leeks as well. The leeks that I started this year did nothing. Let's see. We'll just do that. Let's see if I can even get this out of the ground. Because I never ended up planting them. They just stayed in their little seed tray and I kind of let them die. So I'm really grateful for this little harvest that the garden is giving us. I'm gonna leave these greens here. Now that we got those leeks harvested, we do end up washing them a little bit later in the day. I'm gonna go through and grab all the peppers that are ripe in this bed. I can't even remember, I gotta go back and look and see what varieties of peppers these are. I am not sure if they are hot or sweet. <laughs> that is, was my goal for this last year, was to be a better labeler, and I plan to be a better labeler next year. We will see how it goes. We got all the peppers out of the, that bed, and now we're gonna move to the bed that's right behind it. This was our volunteer potato bed, so you watched my dad harvest a bunch of volunteer potatoes out of this bed, and this is where most of my sweet peppers are. The sweet peppers did not do near as well as the hot peppers. I don't know if it's because there were, ended up being so many tomatoes in this bed or what. I'm really glad what we got out of here, but definitely moving forward, my goal is to do better at growing sweet peppers. I don't know, it could be the sun issue too because this the farther back we go in the garden, the less sun we get in this garden. And I know that moving forward in the new garden, we won't have to worry about sun. We might have to worry about too much sun, which I would rather worry about that than not enough sun. Now we've harvested the three pepper beds here. We got a huge basket full. This bed was our potato bed, and now it's a volunteer nasturtium and borage bed, which I think is super fun. Back here, we're gonna go through these beds. Strawberry asparagus bed. I don't think I'm going to do strawberries and asparagus together again next in the next garden. I had watched a video on YouTube about this and how they're really good companion plants because asparagus grows really deep in the ground, about 12 inches, and strawberries are very surface level and they grew great together but it was just hard to manage the strawberries when the asparagus got really big and tall so what i'm going to do in the next garden is i'm going to have a designated asparagus patch and a designated strawberry patch so that was just one of those things i tried it out it's not my favorite it worked well but i think i would rather have them separate so live and learn and then back here, you all know we have our chicken run that worked beautifully. I am so grateful we put the effort in putting this in. I'm loving having my chickens at my house now though. We've got our bed that we never put anything in. It's kind of been our compost bed, like that's the turmeric leaves. Which you all gave some great suggestions. I could have used those turmeric leaves to steam fish or something in, but maybe next year we'll try that. And then coming from our compost-ish bed, We've got the potato bed that my dad harvested and he did a great job. Anise, I am going to harvest some of these pods and we are gonna make 
I think a lot of you guys gave me the suggestion of grinding the seeds and making some desserts out of the seeds because it becomes a spice. So we're, we might try that. And then over here, we have our black bean bed. Friends, can I just tell you, you know the struggles we went through with this black bean bed, but look at those pods in there. Those are some beautiful black bean pods. Those beans are not gonna mature in time for me to harvest, so the next owner will be able to enjoy those black beans if they choose to harvest them. I did save though three cups worth of seed or beans so that we can plant them in our next garden and hopefully with a really good fence, we're gonna keep the critters out, whether it was bunnies or deer that were eating my black bean plants. Hopefully moving forward, we will be able to avoid that and we will be able to harvest our black beans. Over here is our determinate tomato patch. This has been one of the most productive beds out of this garden this year. We've got a lot of tomatoes in here we're gonna harvest. Along with some carrots, I'm gonna test these carrots to see if they are ready to harvest. Otherwise, no, you can see how little. Those are little. They are probably the size of a pinky. So I think I'm gonna let those continue to grow and if the next owner of this garden wants to harvest these carrots, they certainly can do so. I could come in this garden and try to eat every last little morsel out of this garden. And that's kind of what my plan was. But as I'm in here right now, I just feel like that's not the right thing to do. The right thing to do is take what is ready and abundant at this time and leave the rest. And like I said, I have no idea if these next owners are gardeners and if they'll even appreciate <laughs> what is back here. And honestly, it's not my, it, I don't feel like it's my, uh, I don't even know the word. I'm, I'm having a hard time articulating this, but it's not really my, I don't know if place is the right word, but desire to, this is just going back to what I was talking about earlier. I've never considered myself the most articulate person or the most eloquent when it comes to words, but I just, it, it's more about my own heart issue and just making sure that I don't feel like I'm just taking and taking more than I need. I'm going to take what I need or what is available and just allow the next person to enjoy it. And that's why I decided to leave quite a bit of abundance in the garden. Now, we did do an experiment when it comes to the tomatoes this year. We did not prune our tomatoes. The first two years I was a gardener, I pruned my tomatoes like crazy because that's what the experts say to do. And I am not an expert. I am such a novice gardener. I followed the advice. This year, I decided before we even knew we were gonna move that I was not gonna prune as an experiment. And then it just happened to work out that I would not have had time to prune my tomato plants because it does take a lot of time. And my tomato plants have never been more productive. Now, I need to make this disclaimer. We have not had rain in about 80 days. We are a very, very dry climate in the summer. We are known in the Pacific Northwest to being very moist, but not in the summer, we're very dry. And so I don't really have to worry about humidity and disease pressure because of that. And so I don't have to worry about things like blight. So I can get away with not pruning my tomatoes because of that. Some of these I'm harvesting with quite a bit of stem on them and hopefully we'll be able to enjoy some ripe tomatoes come into November. That's what I'm hoping. I'm going to put some of them in my basement and try to ripen them down there so we can try to enjoy fresh tomatoes long into the fall. But I am leaving a lot of abundance in here. So when it comes to pruning, I think looking at your climate is the most important thing. At least that's what I've learned. I find that you can do what all the experts say, but it's so hard because we all have such micro climates where even just from this garden to my new garden, the climate is gonna be way different because the elevation is extremely different. So I know I'm gonna have different struggles at the new garden than I had here. And that's kind of one of the fun and scary things about gardening 
is just learning what works for you. You can see the abundance that is being left. We are going to grab this beauty today though. I have been waiting all year to collect this pumpkin. Pumpkins are one of my favorite things to grow because they get so big and it's just, ah, I can't believe you can grow a pumpkin. The fact that they start from a little seed and then, oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I took the stem off and I wasn't planning on doing that, but that's okay because it looks like over here, there's a couple blemishes on it, which means I don't think that this pumpkin is gonna last for any length of time in storage. So because I took the stem off, that's okay. We'll just process this pumpkin up right away and we'll make some pumpkin pies, pumpkin, I really wanna try pumpkin cinnamon rolls and pumpkin bread, pumpkin coffee creamer, all the pumpkin things. Now that we have the determinate tomato plants harvested, I wanna show you something really cool in the squash bed, which is where that squash actually came from, that Cinderella pumpkin. One, there is a baby pumpkin right here. That one is probably not gonna mature in the time before our first frost. But over here in this bed that we weeded with my mom, this wasn't even in existence. <laughs> and look at it now. I am not gonna be able to harvest it. The next owner will be able to harvest this squash if they desire. But this squash right here grew from nothing to this in less than four weeks. I'm shocked. That just goes to show how much weed pressure was really, really affecting these squash plants. That's one thing is my squash harvest was not as abundant this year, but I definitely learned a lot. So I'm grateful for that. We have our zucchini plants in here that we put a fall harvest, our fall planting in. I'm not gonna get any of them, but there are some baby squash in here. So the next owner hopefully will come out here and be able to get a few squashes, or zucchinis I should say. And that's the rest of the squash bed. But over here, where we have our summer squash, our first planting, it looks like there are a few that I can go ahead and harvest and we can enjoy for dinner tonight. I'm gonna grab this one too, even though it's a little bit little, but we'll be able to still enjoy it. And I think I'm gonna leave these baby ones for the next owner to enjoy. And at the end of this bed, we have this pumpkin. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab this pumpkin as well. Let's see, friends, if we can harvest this without breaking the stem. We did it. Perfect. Beautiful. This harvest is getting more abundant than I had anticipated. I believe we have one more butternut squash out here that is ready to be picked. You know what, it looks a little green. <laughs> Let's see. Friends, I have never, ever, ever had squash bugs in my garden and they are everywhere. It's disgusting. I'm gonna do a bunch of research this winter on how to prevent squash bugs. But I am gonna take this little guy here. Yesterday, I pressure canned up my butternut squash because it was going bad on me and I didn't wanna lose it. You can use butternut squash just like you would pumpkin. I like to use pumpkin in both sweet 
and savory dishes. That's why I like to have quite a bit of pumpkin in my pantry. And I'm not quite sure I grew enough this year, but whether I did or didn't, that's okay. I can always go buy a few pumpkins from some local farmers. This is the perfect time to do it. So coming from the squash bed, and I actually see, which I didn't notice earlier, one more baby little squash. I doubt it'll produce anything in the amount of time it has left, but I think that's super encouraging anyway. But from that bed, we have what was our corn patch that clearly was an epic fail this year, but that's okay. And then we did harvest our potatoes with my dad out of the old chicken run. We got 12 pounds of potatoes out of there. This was a record breaking potato year for me. I did 156.4 pounds of potatoes, I think this year. Now I did have more growing potato space than I've ever had before, but that is plenty of potatoes for Josh and I to get through a year. We aren't huge, huge, huge potato eaters. So 150 pounds, more than enough for us for one year's worth of potatoes. This whole area last year looked really nice. I had kept the mulch on it. It was kind of a back to Eden style, heavy mulch area, and then I tilled it. And the tilling it was a huge fail because you can see all this weeds pressure that took over. And this is where, and this is where we grew our winter squash. And so moving forward, I don't want to be tilling my garden every year. I don't feel, especially after this experiment here, or not experiment, I thought I was doing myself a favor and making this a lot easier on myself because I didn't feel like wheelbarrowing a bunch of wood chips over here, and that was a grave mistake. I'm looking into doing weed fabric, raised beds, back to Eden, all the different styles, and trying to figure that out. I have not put a ton of brain power into the next garden because it's all I can do to work on finishing this garden. But now that this garden is coming to an end and my brain can start focusing on the new, then we're gonna start really diving in and start doing some serious planning where the greenhouse is gonna go, where the permanent chicken coop is gonna go. You guys gave me so many suggestions about the chicken coop when we moved the chickens. I so appreciate that. I'm really excited about what the future holds for us. Here's our echinacea here. This was a huge success. It took me two years to get these plants to do anything and I am gonna leave them for the next person to enjoy. I have thought about transporting or transplanting a lot of my perennials, which I didn't realize my Rebecca is also a perennial in my zone. So I could transplant that. I could transplant this echinacea. I could transplant some rhubarb and raspberries and a bunch of things that are perennials, but I don't know where the garden is going. I don't know what it's gonna look like. And so it seems a little, I don't know what the word is. What's the word? Premature to start digging up some of these plants when they can enjoy their lives here to then have no idea where I'm gonna be putting them. Cause I'm gonna to have to try to put them in pots and keep them alive. And I have learned that I am not as good at keeping plants alive in pots because you have to water them. So all the pots that we're gonna be having next year, there are going to be on irrigation. And I don't wanna risk losing these for having the feeling of scarcity that I need to take them right now. I can leave them, I've got seed, I can replant them. I could support a local nursery and I could buy some rhubarb starts. And when I know where they're gonna go, then I can plant those things. I don't want to work out of fear or scarcity that I need to take everything I can right now from this garden and feel like I'm missing out or losing out. I want to be able to enjoy this garden while I still have it, let the next people enjoy what is here, whether they wanna keep it here or not, 100% up to them, but that is then their choice. So I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that makes sense to me that I'm just going to allow things to be here and we'll start fresh and new at the new place. I have our purple cabbage here. This cabbage has been, oh goodness, on quite the journey. It looks like it's barely sizing up. I'm gonna leave the cabbage in here. I'm gonna let the next person enjoy it. I don't know why it's taken so long to size up. I feel like I should have been able to harvest this 
forever ago, but that's okay. Our celery has come back with a vengeance. Look at how much celery we have on these. It's been about four and a half weeks since we harvested the celery last, and they have just exploded. I mean, look at this celery that's on here. And this beautiful zinnia that's popping through. Look at how pretty she is. We're gonna let this celery go. I have plenty of celery that we harvested together. Coming through the straw flowers. This was our onion bed and my goodness friends, we still need to take, this is our olive tree. I'm gonna take that today. But our onions, I chopped all of them up yesterday and we have gotten so many onions, even though they were so small and I felt like that harvest was itty bitty teeny tiny. I am blown away by how much onions little itty bitty ones can actually produce when you start chopping them up and preserving them. I think I got a total of four and a half gallon sized freezer bags of chopped onions in the freezer, plus all the hot sauce, ketchup, uh, salsa verde, and all those things we've been preserving in the kitchen together. We've been using homegrown onions, and so that's pretty awesome. Is it a year's worth of onions? Absolutely not, but I just got the text from the farmer who lives up north for me about 30 minutes. I am going to be picking up 120 pounds of onions from him, so hopefully those onions is what will get us through winter. From the onion bed, we have our green bean bed, and I'm gonna go ahead and start harvesting these green beans. I am loving this green bean planting. I believe these are Blue Lake bush beans. I'm gonna have to look back and see what I planted. I planted them July 15th. They are doing phenomenal. I think I'm going to plant green beans in July for a fall harvest every year because they're doing better than, I think I just saw a frog jump, than the green beans I planted in the spring, quite honestly. Well, the green beans I planted in the spring, they kept getting eaten by little critters. So I don't know if they have more food that they don't feel the need to eat my green beans and that's why they're leaving them alone or what, but it's been a total success. I should say though, just because something's been a success one year does not necessarily mean it's gonna be a success the following year. Gardening is one of those things, it's taught me so much. It's taught me I don't control anything. I can do my best and nature takes care of the rest. And then even when I think things are a complete failure, nature will come through and take care of it for me. It will plant volunteers. So even if I forgot to plant something, it'll plant it for me. If I do every single thing in my power to control something, Nature will say, nope, that's not happening. So if you want to learn the lesson of letting go and not being in control of everything, get into gardening. Because you cannot be a control freak and expect to control everything <laughs> when it comes to gardening. And it's also taught me that no one, and I mean no one, is born with a green thumb. We have to learn to grow our green thumb I have killed more plants than I have had plants survive. And that is just what it takes in order to learn to grow food. I'm really excited about these plants because I know as long as the next owners enjoy green beans, they are gonna have some pretty abundant harvest coming their way the next few weeks. There are so many green beans on here. I'm gonna take everything that is harvestable, but I'm gonna leave these little guys. And not only are there probably hundreds of green beans on here that are this size, there are even more that are on here that are this size here. And there are still a ton of flowers. So they are gonna be able to enjoy a massive green bean harvest if they are green bean lovers.
This is our green bean harvest and from our green beans we're going to check on our carrots we planted the same day. We're going to see if we should harvest any of these. I don't think so. They're looking pretty small under here. Let's pull this one up. Oh, you know what? Yeah. This one's not too bad. But, let's see. Oh, that one's not too bad either. Let's see. I don't want to pull up the little ones, though. There's some decent sized ones in here. I think I'm gonna go through and see if I can pull the, the bigger ones. These ones that I just pulled are the Napoli. These ones here are the Bolero. So let's see if these are any decent size. Hey, that's not too bad either. That's a little small. That's a little small. Our carrot harvest this year has been so sad. So if I can get a few, I'll be happy about that. Those are decent, decent. I think what I'm gonna do is break the tops off. So all I'm harvesting are the carrots. Oh, see, these are so small. Seems a shame to pull these ones up. I think this is all I'm gonna harvest. It seems a little wasteful to pull up these teeny tiny carrots when I know they could continue to grow. So Josh and I will be able to enjoy a couple snacking baby carrots and then the rest we'll just let live in the ground and grow and hopefully they'll get harvested when they're more mature. I'm gonna grab our basket so we can go harvest some more tomatoes. From this bed where we just got the carrots, there's some kale that's doing really well. This is our last cabbage patch. You know what? That cabbage is pretty decent size. I'm gonna grab that one. This has not been the best cabbage year. They're pretty small, but I'll take what I can get. That's so pretty. I think I'm gonna take this little one too. We'll enjoy a fresh cabbage slaw coming up pretty soon. So from this cabbage patch, we were able to get a cute little harvest. It's kind of a mess down here, but that's okay. Let's grab the last of the tomatillos and tomatoes we can harvest from here. Last year I had two tomatillo plants planted in this exact same spot. And this year I think I have eight tomatillo plants planted in this spot. And I got about the same amount of tomatillos this year as I did last year. And I think that's because I probably only watered these tomatillos probably five times this year. And so moving forward, I'm pretty sure tomatillos need quite a bit more water in order to size up. This right here is my favorite tomato. It's a Dr. Witchie's tomato. It is so meaty, it is so beautiful. If I can get it off the plant. This is a really, really small one. They probably get two, if not three times the size of this. I think I only planted one or two of these plants and we've been enjoying them. Oh my goodness, I've been we've been making burgers with a huge slice of tomato on it that's just as big as the burger patty. Beautiful grilled cheese sandwiches with a big slice of tomato. And these ones are my favorite. So we will be growing a bunch more of those next year, hopefully. Look how beautiful that is, green, purple, yellow. There's a huge butternut squash right here. It's totally green, so I'm gonna let that just ripen.
I have to say we have had one beautiful tomato harvest this year. Even with the lack of watering those plants had that we were just on, they were more than abundant and that is just amazing. Now I want to go ahead and I want to get these carrots washed up while we're down here so that I don't have to bring these dirty carrots home. As I'm sitting here harvesting this basil, I'm thinking how much you learn from failures. And if it wasn't for failures, some of your best successes would never happen. I'm thinking about this basil. It can be very difficult to grow basil in the summer. And my summer basil did terrible. This basil is doing fantastic. I love planting basil in the summer. Planting the seed in the midsummer to then harvest in the fall because this basil is going to produce many, many, many more harvests. Before our first frost. And if it wasn't for my major basil failure that I had at the beginning of the spring, I would never have learned this. Same goes for those green beans. I might not have planted all those green beans if my spring harvest had done phenomenal. And now I know I love planting a fall harvest of green beans. So all that to say I'm grateful for failures because out of failures comes some of our best successes. It may look like I'm mowing this basil down to nothing, but like I said it will come back with abundance before our first frost. I want to do the same thing with these leeks as we did with the carrots. So here is our harvest today. We've got three winter squash, our Cinderella pumpkin, and I don't know the name of this one. I wish I did. Our cute little butternut squash. I think I'm gonna give these, I've been thinking about this, I think the chickens are gonna really enjoy it. We'll watch them and see how they like it. Maybe we'll give them one and see how it goes, and then we'll save seed from another one because one of these is gonna produce more than enough seed for me. I guess I need to remember that this garden that we're moving to is going to be massively bigger so we could have an entire wall of sunflowers if we wanted versus 
just a little row and you may see my dad here. <laughs> my mom and dad just got here. They are gonna help me move the stuff out of the shed and then we have a couple things in the garage we still need to grab. So I really appreciate them coming back out to help me finish the last little bit of moving. We also got a bunch of our partially ripe tomatoes, green tomatoes, our beautiful Cinderella pumpkin, our humble carrot and leek harvest, beautiful peppers, also our humble cabbage harvest. I mean, these are just precious, the size of these, but we'll make a yummy cabbage salad out of those. And then underneath we, of this basket, we have our green beans and a beautiful, massive box of peppers. How beautiful is that? I want to grab a couple of these zinnias. I watched a video that all you have to do to save seed is plop the head off. And look how stunning this zinnia is. Probably the prettiest zinnia I have ever grown. I think I'm going to wait and pick that right before we leave so I can put that in a vase and then I'll save the seed from it. But look at this one. And I have a beautiful red one right here. We're going to pop the top off. We'll take those home and enjoy those. These are also some of the prettiest zinnias I've ever grown. These are the Queen Lime series. And look how fluffy this one is. So I definitely want to save the seed from this one. I prefer these really fluffy ones versus the kind of smaller humble ones. I think this one is already going to seed a little bit, so we'll let this dry out and collect the seed. This garden has brought me more than just humble produce. It's brought me you, it's brought me this beautiful community, and I couldn't be more grateful for the lessons and the friendships that I've been able to make from this garden. This is a bittersweet goodbye, but it's the start of something super exciting. And I'm really grateful that you've been here learning along with me as we've been fumbling our way through this garden season. This is wrapping up my third year garden and next year it's gonna be a whole new adventure, learning all sorts of new things, starting from scratch, and I'm excited for you to be able to join me as we build a garden from the ground up. I hope you're just as excited for this new chapter as I am and I hope you join me throughout this winter as we go through the planning process. Now that this is being buttoned up, we're gonna finish a little bit of uh, preservation, not a little bit, a lot of preservation. And then all of our focus is gonna be on getting the garden set up. Oh, and if you're wondering about the remodel and like kind of all those things, why that's come to a big standstill, it's because we were waiting on the doors. The doors just came in, I just got the call. And so we're gonna be able to start the house projects again. Josh has been working on doing some smart home stuff so it's kind of boring nothing that you'd be interested in watching <laughs> and so as soon as we get back to the house stuff we'll bring you along and I'm excited to bring you along this garden journey as well. It's gonna be so fun. I didn't start documenting until my second year gardening and I'm excited that this next garden we're gonna be documenting the whole thing and kind of watching that whole thing come together. So. I just want to thank, say thank you for being you. Thank you for being here. I better go in there and help my dad <laughs> organize that shed and get rid of stuff before he does it all by himself. I want to make sure I'm there to help. So thank you again for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.